Welcome to the Agile community and our technical tips and tricks videos. My name is Sebastian Pariser, Director of Community and Senior Engineer. Today I will guide you through the process of how to use and optimize jobs inside of the Azure UMS, what we call scheduled tasks. The jobs function is mainly and more or less only meant to automate tasks related to your endpoints. What I mean by that is we don't cover there something like UMS backups, like assigning profiles to a view, or even doing some cleanup jobs. I cannot repeat it as often as I can because jobs are really meant for endpoints. If you want to look something else, like I mentioned, you have to go to UMS administration, administrative tasks, which is then covering all the overhead, which is more meant for the management and not for the endpoint management anymore. So basically, as soon as you want to update or uh, shut down your device to a specific amount of time, the job function will save you time and uh, some overhead on uh, daily tasks because all you can do there is available as a scheduled element. So you can say it should happen every day on every Sunday or in every hour, etc., etc. So the main focus is for us to update devices, um, but you have also some other use cases we'll cover today, like sending out messages to your endpoints to a specific amount of time, or deploy some specific Java components needed for headset updates and configurations. Even on the OS uh, upgrade level, is it something that you can achieve easily by using the job function? And last but not least, uh, forget it to mention, but I will cover it in the, in the tutorial. You have the wake up job also to send out a wake up signals or a magic packet to your device uh, to a specific time, which is pretty neat if you want to boot up your device uh, in the early morning before your colleagues are joining the company. Like an hybrid tutorial, we are looking at the universal management suite, also known as UMS. We already covered some tutorials on managing devices manually, on assigning specific profiles or master profiles, template keys, etc. And we went through the process also of updating the device in an automated way. We cannot go the route of automated updates without having at least a look at the jobs function included in the UMS. The jobs available over here in the UMS are automated tasks. I would call them scheduled tasks that you may already know from Windows or Chrome or AT on, on Linux and are covering specific actions that you want to execute at a specific time on the UMS server. So first of all, let me describe a few things. First, jobs are not administrative tasks. Administrative tasks like database backup, uh, removing log files, cleaning up the database, etc are not part of that part of, uh, of the jobs. Jobs are really meant for devices themselves, not from an administrative point of view. So basically, let's look at the different kind of comment that we have available in our job description. First, we have the update, which will send immediately an update comment to the endpoint. So be careful with that one. If you want to do that in during the business hours, that would mean that you might have an interruption of your daily work regarding your colleagues. Since you get a pop-up and the end user will have to accept or to deny the update. If he wants to deny it, it will be available after the next week. Shutdown is quite obvious. You will send automatically a shutdown command to all devices listed in the job. Same for reboot, same for the suspend. But where it gets more interesting is on the wake up part. Since we are already covering the wake on LAN proxy topic in another tutorial, you might have the wish to wake up all devices to a specific amount of time in the morning if people are joining your company, let's say every morning at nine or between eight and nine o'clock in the morning, you could speed up the boot up process for the end user by sending out a wake up command, assuming that you have wake on a proxy or magic packets allowed on your network. And then the device would already be there before you work with joining the company. Good idea, by the way, also by combining it with update comments. 
Then we have the update on boot, uh, which will mean that as soon as it is assigned to an endpoint and the device is then shut down uh, after business hours and your workmate is coming back to office in the morning and is turning on his device, he will get an update during the booter process. By the way, you could always think about doing a wake up before in another task that you are sure that the update and boot will process. Just be aware that you have to keep in mind that there is a specific hierarchy so you first have to assign the update on boot task and execute it to give the update the information you have to update on boot and then doing the wake up so update and shutting down is more or less the same here is a good idea to combine it maybe with a post session command already covered in another tutorial that as soon as someone is leaving uh, the building and it's closing his Citrix or ADP connection or WVD session, the device will shut down automatically. And that's combined with the task update when shutting down is just one of the most powerful automation that you might have. Sending the device setting back to the UMS is something that is not such common, but might make sense in specific uh, network architectures where the devices are allowed to contact the UMS, but not in the other direction. That could be one, one thing. Or if you have devices connected via the VPN, we have at the moment sometimes situation where the device is not reporting back the right IP address. So that could be also recommended. Next step is to covering the UMS to device settings. Uh, just be aware that as soon as you change a profile or configuration and the UMS is asking you, do you want to apply these changes now or next reboot? If you say now, it will execute exactly that command. So it will send the settings from the UMS to the device immediately. If you want to do that uh, on a regular base, because you're not sure if the settings reach out all devices uh, and you didn't have a view where it's reported, it might be an idea to automate that to a job, but honestly, I'm not using it so that such often. Coming to topic that we're not using such often anymore, download Flash Player and remove Flash Player was used when Flash Player was quite active and we had the uh, Flash redirection inside of Citrix. In my opinion, you can forget that uh, that features. Download firmware snapshot is only meant for UMA, so Universal Management Agent, Windows 10 IoT devices or Windows 7 embedded devices or older builds regarding Windows. It will never work with a Linux update. It's only meant for re-imaging Windows devices. Send message is sending out a specific text to all your devices. It might be something that you want to send on a regular base, like it's really a bad example, but just sending out a menu every at, at lunchtime to all your devices could be one idea, even if it's not such usual, but just giving you some ideas. Partial update is also only available for Windows devices. So partial updates are more or less the um, Windows component of the custom partition. So the ability to install stuff on your Windows operating system managed by Agile, but it's not meant to be used for downloading a whole firmware image since it's just a small installation with, uh, against a more or less two to four gigabyte image on the download firmware snapshot. Now coming to update desktop customization. As soon as you assign uh, firmware customization, so what we already covered in another tutorial, how to deploy wallpapers, custom boot logos, custom boot switch, etc. Um, you could do that automatically by updating all the desktop customizations uh, integrated in a view. That could be one approach. Next one is apply and deploy the Java Express package, which is meant to be used for the local configuration of your Java headsets. The OS 11, uh, 11 upgrade, which is not a standard update that we're delivering, but really an upgrade procedure. So that's part of the general upgrade process. And last but not least, the Start Login Enterprise Launcher, which is a 
solution that we integrated uh, to monitor the performance of your endpoint in specific use cases. So that's a different uh, option that we have. But now let's come to some samples. So update job. Go to the command update and let's take an execution time which will be in the future. Let's say in, in two minutes more or less. Or let's say five, that I have enough time to explain you the different uh, points of that graphic user interface. So the execution time is the local UMS time. So in my case, Central European Summer Time and the start date and if the job should be enabled or not. I would recommend to keep the log results checked because you want to have an overview about which device received to which time the update comment that you sent out. If you are, have devices that might be offline, you could also say as soon as the device boots up, please send out again the comment that you defined here. And now we are coming to, let's say, the extremely fine tuning of our jobs, the max threads, timeout and delay. Let's imagine that you are sending out a really uh, high load job like an update. On 10 devices, I wouldn't be really cautious because Zumas can handle that usually and you will not have any kind of performance impacts. If you want to send it out to 1000 devices, 10,000 devices or whatever, and your UMS is still your central update repository, then I would highly recommend to decrease the maximum threads, enhance the timeout and put some delays in between because if every device starts the update at the same time, you might notice not only some uh, performance issue on the UMS, but also some errors. So my recommendation would be to don't to decrease a little bit that values. Now let's go through the, let's say, standard uh, I mean, uh, scheduled task settings that you already know from Windows. Um, what is the maximum duration of the uh, of the job execution? Should there be an expiration date, uh, which is a good idea, especially if you think of updates, um, because you don't want to do that uh, over years just to update devices to the latest firmware. Um, that's something you can do easily with other procedures that we have integrated. So at the moment, I would put an expiration date, which is uh, somewhere in the near future, somewhere like two months. Less. Because just to explain why I'm doing that, every start of the job is also creating some log entries in the database, what we already saw in the first wizard window. And if you do that every day, every week, every month, every year, or over, I don't know, every, forever more or less, I wouldn't recommend that because it would just fill up your database with logs, which is, isn't that good. I will come back to the topic log in a couple of seconds. So now I could just select the target device that I want to reach about that job. If I want to test it, I would select one device. If I would like to do that on a branch office, I would select a directory where my devices are in. If I want to be even more precise, just keep in mind that you can also use a view as a target. So you can say, I will use every device. Or if you already created a view which is covering all device, not matching a specific firmware version, that would be even better. And then going to the next level, if you want to do that with a body update, we can combine it more or less with everything. So just be aware that I would recommend usually to do that on a view level instead of a device or director le directory level, but that's just my personal experience. I will keep it now on the directory level just to show you the difference and wait a couple of seconds that our job is started. So let's look at the device now. We are seeing the standard warning when a new configuration is applied, in my case, the update command, so it reached out the device. If no one is there to confirm, 
the countdown will end and the update will start. So coming back to the EMS, let's now look at the execution results. If you don't see anything, that's not that bad. I will just press the refresh button. And now you see all the results. So we see one delivered OK and three in progress. These devices are not online and since I didn't check the return next boot, it's not there, right? So after the next time, you will see other execution results if you want to do that on a regular base, but I didn't now, but you can start this update procedure every week on every Sunday, like an example, and saying before doing that, do a wake up. If you want to get rid of that log informations, we already have covered that and also in another tutorial, but you can say administrative task and delete job execution data and delete them on a regular basis. One last thing I want to mention here uh, before going to the view, never forget that the UMS is sending out the information. So the, there is no queue that is waiting for something. I mean, besides the fact that you have the return on next boot, it's sent out and we're waiting for the next send out, but there is no action in between. So now since I can also edit the job, I can go through more or less every process here besides changing the command because that's already inside of the job. But you can change more or less everything here. Um, how much time it will be uh, expired and the start date, etc. If you are not sure if the devices received that comment or what the device went through, you can always go to right click logging messages and check what kind of information went sent out by the UMS to the end. We are not in a situation where we can combine different jobs together at the moment, like you would already know that from other management platform systems, but we're working on that. So basically, we are done with the job execution. Thank you for joining our technical video session. All links mentioned in this session are available in the show notes section of this video. You will find more technical content and other videos on agilecommunity.com and agileacademylearn.agile.com.